This is part two of a five part series on maturing your sock. In this tech talk, we'll be focusing on maturity indicator level one and what this is really all about. The subsequent series, sessions in this series will focus on maturity indicator level two through four. So let's get started. I'm Paul Pelletier and I'll be your host for this series. I've been here at Splunk for nearly four years now and I'm a global security architect in, in professional services. I've been in an InfoSec for 20 years and I've done everything from working at a small hometown bank where I first got the security bug to owning my own NSSP to working at some of the largest consulting firms in the world. I've built and ran world-class socks across the globe for multiple Fortune 10, 50, 500 companies. Security maturity has always been a passion of mine, which is why I've come up with S2M2. So what is this all about? Let's get into it. So a quick agenda. Uh, we'll start off with a recap of what S2M2 is or the Splunk Security Maturity Methodology, which we covered in the last session. And then we'll go into the structure of S2M2, what the various, then we'll talk about maturity level one. And then in terms of outcomes, what should you expect as a result from this exercise? So this is not just another vendor maturity thing. The Splunk Security Maturity Methodology, or S2M2, uses industry standards and frameworks to measure your security program maturity and defines a prescriptive path forward toward a more mature security program with our platform using a combination of people, process, and technology across the entire Splunk security ecosystem. This is the blueprint for how to build a SOC with Splunk. This is the Splunk way of doing security. It's all about increasing your time to value and fully operationalizing your investment in the platform. It's that guided journey with Splunk as your trusted advisor to help you progress up the maturity curve. It's the interlock between the pre and post sales teams here at Splunk so that we can provide you with that unified customer experience. It's also that meta framework, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Splunk is your security to everything platform. S2M2 is how we bring it all together and use this methodology to increase your time to value and identify where your gaps are and how we can help. S2M2 is that meta framework that encompasses all your major security and compliance frameworks. So regardless of which security framework you, align, you decide to align against, if it's NIST or ISO 27000X or COBIT, ISA 62443, or what compliance framework you want to, is applicable to you in terms of PCI or HIPAA, GOBA, GDPR, SOX, or whatever detection framework you choose, if it's MITRE or Kill Chain, or what response framework of your choice, if it's ADS or React. The whole idea is that S2M2 can accommodate all of these and ensure that you have the right monitoring controls in place, the right types of detections, the right types of dashboards and visualizations, etc. In that way, we're kind of agnostic because we can help you align against all of these things. At Splunk, we believe that every security program can be a great program, but to get to that state, we need to understand where we are and why we're here and where we want to be. That's S2M2. That's what this is all about. We've worked with thousands of customers, large and small, on their journey and taking them from a purely reactive state all the way on the right, which is often focused on legacy security concepts such as parametric defense and zero risk attempt and the reasons why that was the focus. We've seen programs built solely for compliance purposes. We've seen dozens of programs that were deemed a cost center to the org, not an enabler of business. With S2M2, we look to understand that original plan. Then we map them to what we have today. What are we monitoring? Why? What are we alerting on? Why? Are these alerts valuable? Do we have enough people? Do we have people with the right skill sets? What does process and procedure look like for, for incident response? And what does the desired future state look like all the way over on the right now? Are we getting to prioritize all our activities based on measuring and reducing risk? What are the right applications to monitor? What does alerting and automation need to look like to achieve this, these end state goals? What does the desired future state actually look like? Are we going to be able to prioritize all of our activities based on measuring and reducing risk? What are the right things to monitor again? And what, Ultimately, how do we need to use automation and orchestration to affect these things? So we've laid this out into four primary sections and broken each major section into some categories just in terms of organization. The whole idea is that this is very holistic in terms of security operations and not just 100% focused on SOC, although that's a big part of S2M2. Then we want to be able to take the results from this exercise and feed them into your customer success plans with your customer success manager 
provide you with the, your, your maturity measurement and what that roadmap act going forward with Splunk as your security platform actually looks like. So let's talk some more about the structure of this exercise. Initially, for the first hour or so, we'd like to have the, that executive level conversation with your CXO in terms of platform alignment against business requirements, because that's critical for the success of what we're trying to do here together. And then for the rest of it, in terms of people, process, technology, where we dive deeper down into each one of these things, we'll need that some senior rev representation in terms of like your SOC manager, SOC director, senior SOC analysts or threat analysts, uh, threat incident responders, or any other relevant staff you have, right? And then in terms of kind of a high level agenda of how the whole thing works and you know obviously number one is identifying who all these personas are making sure we have the right audience and then we'll start off by kind of sending out an agenda via email to your team and we'll schedule this four hour session where we we'll all get together and then we conduct the meeting that's where we start asking the questions you know it's kind of a question and answer format we go section by section and then we'll come back in about a week or so and present the results back to your team so let's talk about the journey a little bit more, right? So again, this initial workshop, it's a four-step process that takes roughly four hours of Q&A with varying security folks across the organization. The delivery of all these materials, it, once we're done, it, to present the results back to you, it takes roughly an hour, and it's, it's usually planned about a week or so after the workshop. And that's once we've identified where your gaps are, what the remediation activities should be, et cetera. And then should you decide to leverage Splunk services in order to increase your time to value, we'd plan an additional two week workshop with our services team. And then lastly, the whole, this whole thing is built around continu continuous iteration where we continuously monitor, measure and monitor the progress of this and where we need to tweak as, a, as the program continues to improve. So let's talk quickly about what to expect in the different sections. We'll start off initially in, in terms of this executive level kind of conversation in terms of how do we align the platform to key business requirements where strategy is super key in, in this part. Uh, and then we'll break off and then the next section is where we use to collect some additional information from the SOC for more of a business and operational perspective so that we can help to start to provide you guys with that cost benefit type of analysis and calculations in terms of using this as a methodology and in terms of incorporating risk and automation and all of these things together within security operations. Then we'll talk about people. Here there's about three subcategories of 22 total questions where we really focus on you know staffing roles and responsibilities, the training and accreditation that you need for these roles in terms of Splunk, and then some additional other kind of people capabilities as well. Then we'll talk about process. There's five, five subcategories here, 52 total questions. And um, this is where we talk about critical SOC processes. So the, all the processes and workflows you should have in order in place to, to successfully build a SOC using Splunk. In terms of security program, you know, this is more around the operational capability of security operations. And then in terms of best practices, here's all the things that the SecOps team should be doing. And then in terms of reporting and metrics, this really focus on dashboards and visualizations that you should have within the SOC in order to measure the effectiveness of, of what you're doing. And then attribution and risk, this is really focusing on not just using risk and alerting, but as part of the overall strategy of security operations. And then we get to the last part, and this is the longest part, but there's three subcategories, 68 total questions. And the, this first section is the longest. This is where we talk about what data is actually available to the platform. So this is the data availability section. So in terms of like, do you have firewall logs? Are they normalized the SIM, et cetera. And then the, the security reference section, this is about a lot of the different lookups inside of ES that really provide all that enrichment. That's, this is where all the magic happens within, within enterprise security. And then in terms of contextualization, like how are you actually using the alerting? What's the actual cost of a breach look like? Where are those alerts coming from kind of thing? And so now let's talk about the maturity levels. The first maturity level one or maturity indicator level one as we call it and what characteristics really make up mat that maturity indicator level one or mil one. So a typical security mat mat 
programs mature just like this from a very reactive program on the bottom left to a pro proactive reactive state so while I'm talking about this think about where you guys kind of think you kind of land but what we're really going to focus in on this is maturity indicator level one and so middle one looks typically like this where the focus is on access control and perimeter defense on IT risk the mindset is there's data then there's security data everything at this stage is very ad hoc and usually these are understaffed programs often using an MSSP and our security people are usually working double duty both as a security analyst or as an IT ops person building and maintaining tools or you could just be brand new with Splunk and haven't really figured out what the, the next step forward kind of thing is and then step two or mill two instead of monitoring just certain devices this is where that focus begins to expand instead of groups of folks pulling tickets from an email queue the teams are starting to turn hierarchical this is that escalation process there is some triage there might even be some focus on industry standards or mandates but we're missing some things we're still not measuring risk yet we still don't have that visibility across the entire organization and we can't measure what we don't know about so there's no CMDB probably at this point either and then maturity level three this is where we're getting somewhere now we're focusing more on business risk what are the assets and identities that are most important to the business we're building playbooks we're doing some basic automation we're doing some tabletop exercises our people are getting proper security education we understand who and where the threats are this is where lots of the best security programs out there live kind of on the high end of maturity level three but here's where we want to be ultimately mill four we want to get all of our customers to here full automation handles cases as they come in closing the known false positive automation lives in the middle where escalation automations collect all relevant information which is needed to ascertain the the events in the case that may imply a malicious intent and save the analyst 30 to 60 minutes of investigation time it segregates the asset it resets the credentials it blocks the IP or the URL or even more and the SOC at this point is fully staffed with all the right people with all the right skill sets. Everything we do at Mill4 is based on risk. It's measured, it's tracked, it's prioritized, it's accepted, or it's offloaded, but risk is at the center of everything. So where are you in this maturity curve? We'll help you figure that out and we'll give you the insight into where you are compared to your peers. But let's talk about what makes up the how the scoring actually works. So high level, the it will, the way it all works is based on a percentage, right? In there, where zero to twenty-four percent is maturity indicator level one, twenty-four to forty-four percent maturity indicator level two, forty-five to sixty-four percent is maturity indicator level three, and sixty-five to ninety percent is maturity indicator level four, which all goes about against the the scale we just briefly talked about just a second ago. <clears throat> so. Again, scoring is based on a percentage of completeness, and this is intentional because you don't have to, we don't want to create a dependency on product, and we don't want it to have to say in order to be X mature that you have to have ES and Core and UBA and Phantom. It's all about how you use the product, and that's what makes you mature, not what products you have. And so the whole intent here is that nobody should really ever be 100% on any, on anything because this is a this is a whole this is all about continuous improvement so even if you think you're 100% there's always room for improvement now let's talk more in depth about what types of acti activities actually constitute maturity indicator level 1 and this isn't bad by the way because maybe you're a new customer who's just getting started with Splunk as your security platform and maybe you've just bought security suite standard or you've came from a security autobahn and you want to do more and maybe you had Splunk for a while and you aren't really sure what the next steps are or maybe you've purchased ES a while back and you've thrown some data in the platform but aren't really sure how to operationalize it and at this stage maybe you probably don't have any formalized processes for everything and everything you do in security operations is, is more than likely very ad hoc everything's very manual there's no automation it's in terms of the platform everything is very basic at this stage there's no enrichment there's no third-party integrations there's no assets and identities more than likely you probably have very basic dashboards or and visualizations 
uh, there's no reporting in metrics. You know, you're logging and monitoring. You've at least consolidated it into one central platform, i.e. Splunk, right? But basic security data uh, hopefully has at least been onboarded in terms of like firewall, IDS, IPS, vulnerability scanner, server security and event logs, Active Directory, AV malware. And then you've probably explored with turning on some out of the box content, but it's really, really noisy and you don't want know what to do with all these hundreds or thousands of alerts that you're getting at this point. So those are the things that all make up maturity level one. But in terms of outcomes, what can we really expect from all of this? So we've talked about this a little bit. Everybody likes a good chart. This is where we'll come back and we'll give you your maturity ranking will help you identify where your gaps lie, the things that you're good at, the things that you're bad at, and, and, and then be able to come back and recommend what that real prescriptive path forward actually looks like. And again, this is not just another vendor maturity thing. This is all about us telling you how to progress up that maturity scale with Splunk as your security platform. And then these high level, we'll be able to provide you with some higher level recommendations in terms of these are the top five lowest scoring things from each subcategory and in order to help deep dive, you know, at least start to dive into what things are most important to you as an organization and the things that you need to focus on in the, in the very near term. And hopefully this will lead into the greater conversation of how do we actually take action on these findings. This is where actioning is important and the roadmap really picks up. This is kind of where the rubber meets the road for you as a customer. This is the also how we really help to incorporate all of our experience in, in doing these things with Splunk as your security platform in order to help you get better in terms of building this plan and the prioritizations around all these key things. And so just to wrap this all up here, you know, uh, again, this is all about S2M2. It's here. We want to help you, you know, for you guys to uh, come to us and let us help you do the do this as an assessment and help you figure out where you are on your security journey. So let's work together and make your security operations team better and more efficient. And there's four maturity levels. It's all about the journey. Our job is to use this tool to figure out where you land. And it's all about that progress. Progress tied to outcomes equals value. We want to help you get the most value out of your investment in Splunk. We are here as your trusted advisor to help you do those things. So let's schedule a workshop and get this journey going. And then just the forward looking statement kind of stuff that we always have to have. And uh, again, thank you for your time. I hope this was valuable to you all. And I hope you to be working with some of you here in the very near term as well. And then if there is any additional feedback, you can always contact me at p2 at splunk.com. Um, or if you are on any of our Slack, then, you know, if you're a partner at S2M2-help in Slack or, uh, in, again, thank you. And I look forward to talking with you guys, uh, soon sometimes. Thanks. Bye-bye.